Can yes. is it time for? Yes, sir. Is it okay? Can we start now? I welcome all of you for this lecture eight on the theme Sound of Silence and the Role of Music in the Pandemic Kerala Context. Let me introduce the moderator for this webinar, Ms. Carolyn Busutil. Carolyn Busutil graduated from the University of Malta with a BA honors in accountancy degree and certified public accountant in Malta. In 2014, she completed a diploma course in International Financial Reporting Standards from London. And 2015, master's course. And also she studied in Arkansas State University in the United States of America. She worked an internship at the Bank of Valletta as a trainee while working for the advanced level exams. She worked in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries in Malta. Malta Export Trade Corporation Limited, Industrial Estate in Malta. New Humanity Headquarters in Via Ville Della Nos in Rome, Italy. International Mysticy Corporate Institute in Florence, Italy. And Deloitte and Touch Limited, Deloitte Place in Malta. And uh, she's a certified public accountant from the University of Malta and works in the field of finance with a private Italian firm having branches in India. Deeply passionate about youth and adolescents and the culture of unity and universal brotherhood promoted by the Four Color Movement. She collaborates in various programs for teens and has collaborated with the Ecumenical Christian Center for programs held on ecumenical and interreligious dollar. Ms. Carolyn Butis Busutil, we are fortunate to have you as a moderator. Now I give this time to you to moderate this session. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I welcome all of you uh, to spend some time together. We are very grateful for the presence of Reverend Father George, um, who took out time now from a very busy schedule in uh, this time of Holy Week. Um, so first, I um, we are going to start with a prayer. Um, so Reverend Dr. Alexander Isaac, Uh, is there a prelude before uh, Reverend Sukumar? Maybe after prayer, we can go ahead. Uh, after the prayer. Okay, we start with the prayer. Thank you, yes. Reverend Isaac. Thanks. Thank you, moderator. This opportunity. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this great opportunity for all of us to come together in your presence, participating from various parts of the world at a time when we also meditate on the cross and also Jesus' journey to the cross and also the joy of resurrection on the Easter day and your continued presence always has been a source of inspiration to all of us, Lord, uh, especially during the time of pandemic when the whole world was reeling under severe suffering and sorrow. It is in shrill silence that we hear the still small voice of God. It is in utter darkness that we see the divine radiant bright light, God. You have always been a source of help and comfort in good as well as troubled times. During the pandemic, when the whole world witnessed panic and gloom, we could see God acting through God's people who offered a helping hand to comfort, console those in distress. The hymns of old and the psalms of praise and laments have always been a source of inspiration in good times as well as in bad times. As we meditate on the topic of silent, sound of silence and the role of music in the pandemic, help us, O oh God, to recapture those moments of divine grace that all of us could embrace during those testing times. 
we have been reflecting upon the role of music as an expression of god experience especially in the varied cultural and linguistic contexts across the globe today as we hear from your servant father dr mp george whom we have endowed with the gift of the sacred ministry of music bless each one of us through his wisdom and experience that he will be sharing with us we thank you god for the blessings that the indian christian community receives through the ecumenical vision and mission of the ecumenical christian center in bangalore and for its leadership help us to experience the warmth of your presence and grace during this enlightened session we seek your grace through the name of our savior jesus christ amen amen thank you for that beautiful prayer i just wanted to mention for those of you who don't know dr isaac uh, he is associate professor and chairperson at the department of theology and ethics at the united theological college in bangalore thank you very beautiful prayer thank you Please, please. you for that beautiful piece of uh, music reverend sukumar uh, we introduce now our speaker for this evening um father mp george um who joined us all the way from chicago today um he is professor emeritus from the orthodox theological seminary of kottayam kerala 
and the former director of Shruti School of Liturgical Music. And at present is serving as a director of the SAMA Academy of Music and Arts of Kotagam. He's a Syriac music specialist, a Western music composer and director, and has composed and performed the symphony, The Song of an Indian Cuckoo, composed five piano sonatas, one piano concerto, um, and the performer of Carnatic Music Concert. Um, right now, as I said, Father George is in USA. There is a symphony and a classical concert uh, to attend to there. And we are very eager to hear from you all that you have to offer us about the Kerala context. Thank you, Father George. <clears throat> Glory to the Triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May His grace and mercy forever and ever. Amen. Good evening and good morning to all my dear participants, our dear moderator today, Caroline Basutil, the Director of uh, Economical Christian Center, Reverend Dr. Shampi Thomas, and the Program Executive, Reverend Sukumar Babu, all dignitaries and the participants of this wonderful conference today, on the day of this Passion Week, I extend my wishes, best wishes to you all. All are waiting for the wonderful feast, the resurrection of Christ. So wish you a happy Easter before that to all of you. Today, I am very much happy to be with you even though I am not in my full heart, half of them is now in, in my church, half only is here. The time is not suitable for me like an Orthodox priest to share their time out of these canonical prayers. Anyway, I am glad, especially while you are thinking about the topic music, I thank God that you have already included me also in this wonderful list of the special category of these paper readers. And also a wonderful subject you have selected. I congratulate those who are, who are beyond this work, especially this is a very new title and very interesting and also very deep subject, sound and silence. And also it related to the pandemic, this time that related to all people, all religion and all clan in and around the world. So congratulations, dear Sukumar Babu and uh, all the team with you, thank you very much. As a music student, I see I am a music student till, till my death, I am a student of music. It's um, music is such a vast subject I mean. I was also thinking about the sound and silence. <clears throat> so sound of silence and the role of music in the pandemic. Yeah, I am just going through a different way, a wonderful papers that you have, we have already heard last time. And my view is entirely in a different way. I am just pass, passing through. Sound and silence are two words 
that have opposite meanings. Here, the organizers of the seminar are trying to find out the philosophical, theological, and scientific aspects of sound and silence. Finding the meaning of sound and silence is a difficult and contemplative task to bring forward the truth in this subject. It can only be completed through proper devotion and deep thinking. Here, the subject is silence. And to find out the sound in silence is analogous to finding light in darkness. Because I just sometimes think how the wild animals are going to catch their prey in the midnights. How can they see it? Is there light in the midnight? Sure, there is light, but we can't see, but animals can see. We can't see, that means it is, can't say that there is no light, there is light. Likewise, sound and silence, even though it is two extremes, there is sound in silence. Sound in physics is a phenomenon by which vibrations of matter form an acoustic wave that passes through a medium like air, liquid, or solid. That is according to our worldly sound, there should be a media should be there. And there should be vibration. The vibration of matter becomes a sound and the surrounding air becomes wave. And through that wave, we can identify sound. So it's a vast subject according to physics. <clears throat> according to the Hindu faith, Sound is also known as Mooladhara. Mooladhara means it is the fundamental source of creation. So the sound is also known as Omkara in Hindu faith. Om is a word that cannot be easily pronounced. So there are some technical schools and teaching uh, training centers of the Brahmins. At first they teach how to pronounce Om. Om is uh, the mixture of the vowels, A, O, A, E, U, Um. Om, without this vowel, a language cannot sustain. Om is divine. Om is the sound from God. So they give more importance to this word Om, Om, and uh, that Om represents God. That is the Muladhara. Thus, the creation was from sound. In Christian theology, also sound is mentioned as the main source of creation. According to the theology of Saint John. The creation was done by the logos or the word. The word was with God and the word was God, St. John chapter 1, 1. So what is the word logos? That was the first vibrating word. And by this word, the whole created. And from where this produced, according to St. John, it was from the Son of God. So that is why he again says, by whom all things were made. And he came to his own. That means the sound produced by let it be light that is from the Logos. The Logos is the Son. St. John is giving importance to the word logos and by the sound of the logos this vibration by that vibration this movement started so the whole globe everything is moving 
because of that source, that is the divine sound that is from the Logos. It means the entire creation was by the Son of God. Creation was initiated by the words, let it be light, then sun was created. Creation was from a state of nothingness or a state of silence. Before creation, there was nothing. Everything was in silence. From nothingness, all things in the universe became a reality. From silence, the sound of God created everything else in the universe. So everything is from nothingness, zero. Zero is a very important and valuable uh, number according to mathematics. From zero, everything else created. From nothingness, everything comes. From silence that is coming up, everything else in this globe, in this universe. Language is the medium used for communicative purposes, allowing the human mind to express feelings. It's a special feature that God has given to only human beings to express ideas through language. All animals and birds, there are languages, but language like human being, it is a little different. The others are a little bit computerized. Even cuckoo, Miss Carolyn said that there I could perform a symphony, the song of an Indian cuckoo. 100 years back, cuckoo was singing the same note and still that it cannot change, that is computerized. A cow can do like that. There is a computerized voice, but human beings, their vocal code is the most important and delicate instrument according to the whole creation. It coming up, it actually, it, it focus according to the pitch and our tongue, it can produce sounds. If you teach parrot a word, they can produce something like ama or appa like that. It can produce only they can speak, but human tongue and human vocal cord, it's a very important and miraculous instrument that God fixed in the human body. So with this, that we can communicate with words. Human language is identified through the alphabet, alphabet, but silence is a language without alphabets. However, it is communicative. So every great man say that silence is a stage and it is a, there is a language in it. Silence express real and unimaginable thoughts, visions and meaning more than any language can. We have noted that language has, it has a limit. But silence, that's a language that is beyond that limit. The sound of silence is the language that can be heard only those who tune their mind to the real telecasting station that is the most high. Sages in Indian language is rishis. In um, English, we can say maybe a hermit. More than that, sages are the divine people who left their worldly life like monks and hermits. Sages are much better than, are much more higher than hermits. They always have their minds tuned, acting as substations, receiving messages from the highest telecasting station, like a radio that receives radio waves. This is very important. They can only hear that. This sound, the sound from the heaven, they can identify it. Their minds sound like a radio. 
from a radio station, they are telecasting in radio waves. The waves are in and around us, but we can't hear. But you have a device, like a radio, that you can tune to that station, you can hear that. Sages are doing the same thing. They can tune in their mind to their so they are acting as a substations. That's why I mean as acting as substations, receiving messages from the highest telecasting station, like a radio that receives radio waves. That sound does not need a medium like worldly sound that is air. Air is a media. In a vacuum, we have already learned in physics that it cannot move. That is why in space, they can't communicate like the, the worldly language. That would not be possible. In the Old, Old Testament, the role of prophets was to recognize that sound and interpret in the worldly language. Some we have already heard many, many prophets in the Old Testament. And how they got this message from God and how they recognized it and they, they, they retranslated into human language. That is a very important thing. In the Bible, the book of Exodus gives instances of conversation between God and Moses many times. In book of Numbers, book of Leviticus, the book of Deuteronomy, we can hear that the Lord said to Moses like this. How he heard this voice. In the Mount Sinai, he was with God. He heard that sound and he then translated into the human language. Likewise, Abraham heard that voice. Prophets such as Joshua, Samuel, and other prophets heard that, that voice and led the people according to the will of God. God was talking to them in God's language and that transmitted to the mind of the prophets like Joshua or Moses and they retranslated into human language the will of God that was, that was communicated through these prophets. <laughs> prophets prophesied that whatever they heard from God was through the sound of silence. So this is what is I am going to explain that. How they heard a long exercises that they had in silence, in the background of silence, they tuned their mind to receive the tone from the heaven, tone of God. Why do the desert fathers spend their time in the wilderness without food or even water? It might be a thousand times better than to hear the worldly pop or rap music system. They, they enjoyed that that sound, they forget to take food. They forget about water. They forget about the worldly life, but they were enjoying the sound that they were hearing from the most high. Worldly people may be stimulated by this music, the pop and rap and any feeling music with high rhythm and high sound like Michael Jackson or something else. And that may, give enjoyment to a common man. But after a short time, they may get tired of hearing this music. That is the difference between the spiritual sacred music and the popular music. Some film music, at first we may say, oh, fantastic, fantastic. After you hear five times, you just avoid it. But sacred music, spiritual one, even people are hearing the wonderful compositions of Beethoven or John Sebastian Bach, Mozart. Every time they are repeating, also in, according to the Syrian church as a 
priest of the Syrian church. I have, I am teaching the Syriac music. I know since the fourth century up to this 21st century, our church is repeating and repeating the Syriac music. Why? It is because the composers were not from the world. They are from the beyond the sacred world. The vibration of their lines, the sound will be much higher than the worldly people. That's why we, every film music that we heard and just we put into trash. But the spiritual music that will give like a knife, it sharpens it while, while you sing or hear at every time. However, sages sit on rocks, sand on ever under trees for days or months enjoying the sound of silence. They can't go out from that stage. They forget about food and water for days and months. They can see the supernatural visions on the unseen screen in the sky and learn it. It's because the inner faculties are working according actively by freezing the outer body. So they are concentrating only the inner man and they just forget the outer man. India is the land of sages and monks. Thus, India is quite unique than any other country. As an Indian, I can boldly say, India is quite unique in this field as she has contributed to five different subjects. First, in the field of medicine, that is Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a fantastic medical system. Second, philosophy, Tattva Shastra. You see, we can't sometimes interpret what is included in the Upanishad and other epics. A lot of Tattva Shastra, Tattva Shastra of Sri Shankara or Vivekananda, Madhva, a lot of Philosophical giants were here in India. Even uh, scholars from abroad, they even cannot interpret what they meant by. So philosophy. The third one is astrology, the about the globe and the the, the rotation movement of uh, this globe and everything else. The the science on this astrology and astronomy. Vana Shastra. So, the position of stars. Uh, in my childhood, I have seen at that time, I'm from a, a small village, and then there were no any watch or something, big clocks or what knows. There. They were the forefathers. They were going for working in the field in the three o'clock morning, looking at star where this the star is, the polar star where it stands. So stars were their mark, landmark, and time giving uh, timepiece or clock. Also, we can see that while Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the Magi's, they were from the East, they found that a star, a special star was there. They were following that star, they, and they, they followed and up to Bethlehem, and that star stopped there. So there is a Shastra, a science behind this, the position of star science, its, its movements. And the five is music and dance, Sangeeta Nrutta Shastra. There, is a, there was a man who lived Bharata. Bharata was the man who brought a science to dance. Okay. It's very, very interesting how to, you see, if you see the Bharata Natya, Natya and Nadana of dances and also music. According to music in the classical period of India, they brought forth the theory of Shruti system, that is the tone and semitone system, is a little bit higher. It may not be much better to say in this conference because it's very scientific. They found in an octave, Carolyn, um, you, might, you may understand what is that octave. In an octave, there will be 44 semitones, shrutis. And the later scholars, they didn't understand what is this 44. They tend to 22 shrutis in an octave. 22 
uh, Sudhis are there. Even they, nobody could understand what is that going on. So how the Indian musicians, how they formed the system of music, Sarigama, Pathanisa, the seven uh, names of the nodes and its fractions. So this semitone and tone and quarter tone theory that was brought by the musicians of India before Pythagoras brought it. Sound is by vibration that was first that came up from India, but nobody hears it. Even now, nobody can hear that sound. Everybody say that Pythagoras was the man of, who brought forth the physics the, of sound. No, India, you have to go through go to deep that you will find out the musicians of India, the music, Sangeeta Shastra. In the 8th century, there was a man who lived, Sarangadeva in Bengal. He wrote a book, Sangeeta Reknagara, the wonderful book, how many muscles, how acts even, how a sound produced, Sa, Re, what are the faculties, what is doing there, they, he wrote in the third century AD. And then we can imagine without a computer that we are depending computers now, but he didn't have such type of devices. I don't know how he, we brought it forth and it is exactly correct. So these five faculties, that is the contribution of Indian sages, not the local people, but Indian sages, they brought it through their prayer, how our mothers, now it is not, but in early times in my childhood, I have seen that how my mother make butter from this curd that is doing some work, it will come up, that is prayer. Ayurvedic medicines are not tested in a specific laboratory like in English medicine. The sages who founded this medical system by bringing roots, herbs, sherbs, leaves, and, and uh, this bark of trees from different places verified they, they would be suitable for the use of treating different diseases. The rules for consuming medicines are avoidable and unavoidable things for daily life. These type of rules, they have made it up. And the contributions of monks near the Himalayan ranges and other places of solitude wrote this wonderful medical system. Hindu religion has thus contributed much to the world. In Hindu philosophy, the phenomenon of hearing divine sound in silence is known by the name Shruti, S-R-U-T-I, Shruti. Shruti means what is heard, but in music, it is the basic pitch, the two notes that is giving us basic pitch, or the mixing of two, two notes, together to make a basic pitch that is known as Adhara Shruti. So if while a, a, a performer, before singing, he say, sing, sa pa sa pa sa sa pa this is Shruti, sa pa you can, the pitch can, sa pa so accordingly, that's this, if the sound of pa will be according to the sa, where it stands. So these are the two sounds that is also known and the music known as Shruti. But in that other Shruti is different. That is what is heard. There was a great spiritual giant in India. His name was Vatmigi. Vatmigi, the author of Adhyatma Ramayana. He turned from his savage life to the peak of spiritual knowledge by hearing the microtones, I mean the inaudible sound, not now it's a microphone, but much better to say macrotone from the highest. He was, he turned, he turned his savage life to a spiritual life and he sat there years and sat for years and at last the termites mud cage covered him. He didn't know, he forgot everything in the world, something the termites that cage became, covered him. This means his inner body was living and his outer body was frozen, forgot. Vyasa, the other author of Mahabharata, he also was in the same way. So 
this is very clear from the Pauline theology. In Corinthians, we see Saint Paul explains the human body and life after death. Man is made up of two bodies, the earthly body and the heavenly body. Adam was created from the earth, but he became a living human only after God blew through his nostrils and gave him life. Then he became a living soul. We are aware, aware that God created man in his own image. This means the inner man is a heavenly body or the unseen body, but the outer man is made up of soil. God made in his own image means God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, everything we say. There is no any limited space or time. God is beyond that, that we learn that. Then why, how God created man in his own image? So St. Paul here clearly is the heavenly body and the earthly body. The heavenly body, that it is this unseen body in the physical body, in the with the, the body that is made up of soil or dust. So there is a body in each and every person. I am stalking you. It is, the, 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 it is not through the outer body, but from the inner body, the inner man, that is for the eternal life. So the inner man with the heavenly body will live for eternal life with the immortal body, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. The heavenly man with the heavenly body or the spiritual body will see supernatural things and hear supernatural sounds. The outer man needs food, but inner man needs prayer. That is the difference. Buddhism and Jainism are two religions brought up from Indian soil, which flourished all over the world. Now, they seem to be two strong religions like Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Buddha was enlightened by wisdom or bodha by strong prayer and meditation under a bodhi vriksha or bodhi tree. He attained knowledge and his name was changed from Siddhartha to Buddha. He was a prince and the heir of a country, but he left everything and selected a new way of life in meditation. And meditation is the state of silence. He attained the state of wisdom or nirvana through continuous meditation. What does this mean? He found the truth by the stage of silence. The microtonal sound that he heard, that suti, it was resounding from years and years. We can now even we can hear that resounding of that microtonal sound, what heard Buddha. Mahavira, the founder of Jainism, was not differ, different from Buddha. Both these spiritual giants taught the way of life, attaining the stage of enlightenment through the state of silence. Both these religions took birth in India, but were attracted by neighboring countries more than in India. The sound of silence by these enlightenment is resounding through sages, preachers, and teachers up to this age. Most of the great men before a great action will undergo a state of prayer and meditation. Jesus Christ, before his mission, kept in silence in the wilderness for 40 days. He didn't eat or drink in those days. The silence gave him more physical and mental energy because he was a perfect man. He heard the voice of his father in a state of silence. In his temptation, the devil asked a question. Asked this change to change the stone into bread. But Jesus answered the devil by saying, Man does not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. I mean, that is the he's mentioning about the microtone, the sound that is from the heaven. Worldly food is needed only to the physical body, but the inner man needs the word of Word from God Almighty. Jesus proclaimed to the world what he heard from his father. So the word Shruti is a very important word 
not only for music but also for the spiritual world <laughs> it represents the word for microtonal sound the sound which is common ear cannot common man cannot hear this means Sukumar, is it any problem there? No, Should sir. I conclude? Please continue, sir. Uh, you can continue. Yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes. I will, I will, as early as possible, I will try to conclude it. Sorry. So, what do you mean by microtone? Microtone is the smallest division of sound. So they cannot be measured with hertz. Sound, the frequency is measured by hertz. It is the highest division is tone, semitone, and quarter tone, according to Western music, that can hear in the human ears. The human voice can sing up to a quarter tone. It's very difficult to sing a quarter tone, but can be. But the violin can produce this. Sare, sare. Sare, sare, re, sare, ra, sare. That's a semitone. And in this sare, there is a quarter. I can't take it. But if in an, an Arabian uh, citizen, they can sing. The, in the keyboard in uh, produced by in, uh, Arabic countries, there will be a special switch for that to take the quarter tone. But there is fractions from there also. That is the microtone. And the, it is very difficult to sing for human beings. But that microtones, I, I mean, most writers and thinkers like to select midnight as the suitable time for contemplation and writing. Silence take more initiation to create, to hear the microtonal sound from nature. Always Jesus Christ, in the daytime, he was preaching and teaching and scolding them somewhere else, doing miracles. But the, in the evening, he went up Mount Olives he was with God. That was the great time that he was talking with his father in this language. Every great man spends their time at midnight hearing the microtones of the supernatural powers. In the book of Old Testament, prophet Isaiah had the angelic hymn, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3 following. The sound of the angelic hymn may not be the hymn of the earthly voice, but this voice, I mean the in the microtonal voice. So here he was just feared while he heard the singing of the seraphim. So these microtones, it is infrasound. There is two sounds, ultrasound and infrasound. That is, it is less than the, the human ear can detect only up to the 20 hertz. So infrasound is less than 20 that we can't hear. That's microtone can be here these ages and that through the their mind that is fixed there, they heard that. In the book of Revelation, John the Apostle heard the divine sound in silence at the, in the island of Patmos. After these things, I looked and saw a door open in heaven. And the first voice that I heard like a trumpet speaking me was saying, come up here and I will show you the things which might happen after this revelation, chapter four, verse one. So St. John heard, here apostle heard the voice from heaven in the silence at Patmos. This is not a vision, but a real sound that he heard. This is the experience of microtonal voice. I think this is the reality. Many references in the book of Revelations mentioned that Apostle heard the music of angels and elders through the sound of musical instruments. This might be a true truth. It could be a reality rather than an illusion. So what is the lesson that we can learn from this? As St. Paul says, that we are seeing is temporary and what is unseen is permanent. That is a very important St. Paul's verse. The visible and audible are less, but the unseen and inaudible are more than more and more and more and remarkable. All the spiritual men have led their worldly life because they were seeking the finest. The fine tuned, they, they fine tuned their body and mind to understand the real truth by sitting on a still stage or in silence. 
silence is this real stage of acquiring real knowledge as we see in the following verse be still and know that i am god psalms 46 verse 10 the role of music music can be defined as the rhythmic sound of rhythmic movement of sound that is the best definition for what you mean by music music is the rhythmic movement of sound movement of sound the rhythmic movement of sound is music here the rhythm in indian word tala and sound shabda so tala and shabda or the rhythm and sound come together merging together forms music it means music net does not need words i mean a violin concert there are no any words any lyrics then lyrics is not needed music that moves on lyrics is called a song and song is different song is the music with words music expresses the mood of the mind music is a mixture of many scientific aspects such as mathematics physics chemistry biology uh, psychology and so other subject are coming to the risk that we can see in music it history or origin will go up to the time when the movement of the universe began there you, you, you can write the history of music it will be very difficult to me that you start from the movement that begin at that time yeah, God has kept a magical secret in this universe that is music. The universe moves according to the principle of motion. The principle is based on a particular rhythm. That is why 24 uh, hours and this type of calculation that we are making, that God's calculation is very correct. The globe, the earth is moving according to it, its own particular rhythm. Otherwise, tomorrow there will not be any good morning. That will be the last day. So this is uh, according to the music is the, on the basis of rhythm and the movement of the universe is also according to rhythm. So the movement of the universe is musically, um, yeah, the musical or the rhythmic movement. The universe, yeah, the principle is, the, is based on a particular rhythm. The rhythmic pattern is the secret behind the movement of the universe. If the rhythm is the base of music, Cosmic music is the force behind the creation. Music can be mainly divided into two parts, folk music and art music. Folk music is the music of the country that expresses the lifestyle of the people. It is like a mirror that reflects the social aspects yeah, of a particular place. It occurs in monophonic. Monophonic means there is no any harmony. So harmony is polyphonic, but folk music always will be in monophonic with one voice as well as non-classical formats. It's not the refer of who is the author of the folk music and who is the music, musician who directed when it started. Nobody knows. Folk music have no any other history. Uh, those who want to study a particular place or people should study the folk music of that region. Particular songs were formed, it is not composed, for special occasions like plowing, harvesting, boating, such type of occasions, which shows the cultural development of a country of the people. With folk songs, many individuals are unaware of the author or composer. Folk music comes up like the growth of mushrooms coming up from earth during the rainy, rainy season. We don't know who sowed it. Mushrooms are coming up. Nobody knows how it come coming up. It does not have, I don't mean the mushrooms that is artificially prepared mushrooms, but natural mushrooms are coming up like that. It does not have a music system as it meant for a group of people. Art music is on, it is different. Art music means the classical music. Is um, according to Western music, the Middle Ages that they started the classical music. According to India, we started the classical music from the 18th century. So art music and folk music are the two divisions of the uh, musical system. And if we can divide into two, <clears throat> Kerala is the state in India with a history of art and architect architecture. Before it came a state, it was ruled by local kings who were ardent supporters of art and music. 
not like the democratic ministers like that kings and emperors were the lovers of music and arts those they had uh, art court musicians and uh, court uh, architects were there <laughs> kings enjoyed music with great musicians known as court musicians one of the great rulers in kerala known as swathi tirunal himself composed various kirtanas or hymns and in his period he helped the carnatic music system it it speak most of the art and architecture was based, based on the hindu faith and also christian art forms like margangali chautu nadagam and parijamuttugali which were popular according to muslims also penna and dafmut were developed and still are encouraged by the educational department of in kerala various music academies and universities are nourishing music and arts by giving graduate and postgraduate certificates in kerala religious music and popular music are flowing as two parallel streams the film industry is fostering popular music and the religious music is fostered by religious groups bible conventions are the place where the new compositions emerge churches are giving more importance to liturgical hymns and chants in an overview kerala has was identified as the state that gives more importance to classical sacred liturgical and popular music the covid-19 pandemic brought each and every field from its peak to a lower level the world became silent without doing anything i feel in a different way this was a time of cleansing given to the world by the almighty before natural calamities nature becomes silent all birds animals and creatures become silent i saw that there is a tsunami came once in 2003 all small birds and creatures they were get into forests and some other safe places but human beings they could not understand what is going on there the whole atmosphere was in silence during the time of eclipse we can see before the day of eclipse the whole universe become silent except man everything they can understand the movement of the universe so during the pandemic there were no gatherings bible conventions liturgical services it is because due due to closed churches human beings closed their mouth with mask still it is continuing on that at some way i feel that it is good it mask was sometimes a blessing educational institutions were closed and streets were empty there were no vehicles no flights no travelers no water boats or ships no smoke not even any sound in few in nature in one way corona was a blessing to the purification of nature in another way it deeply affected the economic condition of humanity all musicians were silent during this time instrument were kept aside i mean it in kerala there were no worship no music no stage programs everything everywhere was in a state of silence as corona vanishes i hope that the stage of silence will be changed all over the world and fly over the peak of the highest mountain of joy and happiness music acts as a medicine for many diseases and at times can work more than medicines what is disease disease occur due to disorder of tissues in the body music therapy suggests that the constant pressure of sound by beating and drumming causes the tissues to become back in order the once um, uh, a, a scholar a great man who read about the music therapy here the, the therapy feature of david and soul so i am not repeating that in kerala during the festivals of temples there is a special religious act known as kavadi thullal these some selected people are piercing their cheeks with an iron rod while the rhythm of musical instrument known as chanda while it is coming up beating up they forget the world even their pain they are piercing their their cheeks that's a religious act they forget everything at their pain in kerala there is a temple in trishur 
which is famous in is a festival known as Puram. You can see a lot of elephants are there, and there you can see the a lot of chanda artists are doing marvelous beating of chanda, the instrument, a peculiar instrument of Kerala. Wonderful. Those who are participating, absolutely they are forgetting their state of mind. So sound can change you. Sound can change your mind. Sound can heal. This is very important and it is a fact. So here, the sound is the ultrasound and the infrasound is. So ultrasound, let it be there. But in silence, you can hear the infrasound. This is the duty of a human being, a spiritual man, to hear the microtones in the state of silence. Although silence kept the world a captive, worship and music continued and resound in the homes and the hearts of people of Kerala, which means that there is still a resounding hope that the world will once again be filled with the beauty of vibrations that had been lost due to the pandemic. People in Kerala were listening to worship music within their houses. The music helped the people to enjoy their life joyfully in this pandemic and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Father George. That was really so interesting. I felt as we were listening, it was like on our silence, you were uh, creating vibrations to lead us to the truth no, of the word of God for us. And you gave us not only the Kerala view, but the world view, really. Um, we would need much more time to hear from you. Um, maybe we can mm, dedicate a few minutes for any doubts or any uh, reactions from the audience. If you have anything to tell Father George, maybe you can raise your hand. I saw uh, a comment from Ranjini uh, to all of us saying that the voice of God to prophets translated to people is like tuning radio waves. This is a beautiful thought. Uh, Rachel, you want to um, comment or ask a question? Do you have a doubt? You can unmute. Okay, there is another comment saying, Father George, thank you for the wonderful in-depth knowledge provoking of the word or om or divine sound and many other notes of swaram, tala, microtone, infra and ultrasound, etc. And there's a question, is the word in John uh, chapter one, verse one, I am what I am or I will be what I will be of Exodus and the Om um, are the one and the same, or is there a difference in the sound of silence? And to me, uh, I mean, I am what I am. That's the, that's the name of the Lord, Yahweh. That's it. Uninterpreted, uh, unuttered. That's where the name of the Lord cannot be uttered. Om um is the mixer of this, the, the quality of God, I mean, I, I think like that. So it is not, cannot be one, it, it must be two, I think. Thank you. Very clear. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, if any questions that you can give to Dr. Sukumar Babu, that I will respond to you. If you let me, give me out, I can go to my rest of my service. And uh, I will come yes. in the next next uh, uh, meeting. I will be. I'm not quite sure about. I cannot. I couldn't explain everything as I was coming up like <laughs> something a butterfly coming up to explain more than more to you about music because that is my subject. So it's just yes. concluding um, and I come in a comprised form. That is not enough. I don't know whether you are satisfied or not, but. Uh, I'm not satisfied, but in one way I'm satisfied. You are very much keen to hear my, but if I want to explain more and more, that is why I'm not saying I'm not satisfied. But I thank God for sharing my um, my knowledge with you all here. Thank you. 
Thank if you. Any Thank that you. you can, okay, tell to Dr. Um, Sukumar. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Sukumar, I pass on to you so that we can. Thank you so much. I thank Father Dr. Professor M.P. George Momotil, Professor Emeritus and former Director of Sriti School of Liturgical Music, Orthodox Theological Seminary, Kota and Kerala. Father, you brought energy. You brought massive creativity. You brought knowledge. You brought a wealth of wisdom. It is not just music, it is interdisciplinary. It is also multidisciplinary. I feel I'm in a different world now. Thank you for unpacking the word sound, silence, and music. How fascinating to see the intersections between music with the physics, Hindu faith, Muladhara, fundamental source of creation, Omkara. You crossed the music religion and you took us to a state of Nirguna where we enjoy the role of yeah. silence. It was awesome presentation, Father. I don't have words, I'm floating in the air with a due respect and immense gratitude. Thank you for sharing such a wealth of knowledge, especially the unpacking of the word Sruti, Vyasa, Margam Kali from Kerala context. These are all very fascinating thoughts for us. You fed us with a massive wealth of food for our minds. You have taken all of us to a new musical world, forgetting our own state of mind. I thank Reverend Dr. Alexander M. Isaac, Associate Professor of, in the Department of Ethics. Thank you so much, sir, for joining with us and praying in the opening prayer. Thank you so much indeed. I thank our moderator, Ms. Carolyn Busitin. Thank you, ma'am, for meticulously moderating this session despite your busy schedule. Thank you so much indeed. I thank our Director of Ecumenical Christian Center and my guru, Professor Reverend Dr. Shanti Thomas Hachin, for his amazing guidance and prayers. I thank our Deputy Director, Mr. Tanmundran Vepe. Thank you very much, sir, for all your guidance and support. And the question for this webinar is, how sound, silence, and music are understood in the webinar of Professor Father Dr. M.P. George Mamatel. I'm repeating this question. How sound, silence, and music are understood in the webinar of Professor Father Dr. M.P. George Mamatel. Achim. Our next webinar will be on 18th April 2022 by Reverend Sanya S. Baheri. She is from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobacco. She'll be presenting on role of music, the sound of silence and the role of music in the pandemic from Caribbean islands. Please participate in this program. And the prelude was uh, given by Father Dr. M. P. George Achen. And now postlude, we'll have the postlude. Now it's a devotional song. It was sung by Professor Father Dr. M. P. George. Kindly join with us. Thanks to all of you. Thank you so much indeed.
പുത്രന്റെ പാപങ്ങളൊക്കെയും ഏറ്റം ക്ഷമിച്ച താതൻ ൂർത്തപുത്രന്റെ പാപങ്ങളൊക്കെയും ഏറ്റം ക്ഷമിച്ച താതൻ പാപിയാമെന്നോട് പാപങ്ങളൊക്കെയും ഏറ്റം ക്ഷമിക്കുമല്ലോ Thank you. Happy Easter to all.